Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video from Rootmaster for Hire. Now before we get into today's film I just wanted to spend a moment to say thank you to all the new subscribers who have joined us since we put that two-part engine change video online a few weeks ago. So if you're new here welcome aboard and thanks for joining us. If you've been here for a while you'll know that I've been itching to get on with the inside of RM1214. When I bought that bus I knew that there was a lot of work to do on the interior. It just didn't meet our standards. So that work on the interior is starting today at last. And one of the first jobs that I wanted to do is replace the Rexine. Now in case you don't know what Rexine is, it's the leather type material that sits underneath the window and above the kick plate. It runs down both sides of the bus, it runs on the bulkheads as well, on the upper and lower decks. So there's a lot of Rexine to replace on a Rootmaster bus and it's a big job to do it properly as well because to replace the Rexine you've got to take all the seats out and the seat frames and that's what we're going to do today. Now the problem is we can't replace the Rexine with Rexine because Rexine is no longer produced in the UK. It doesn't meet modern safety standards. But what we can get is an identical leather cloth product. Okay, it looks the same, but the big difference is it doesn't smell the same. Now, if like me, you traveled on these buses when you were younger in the 60s, 70s or 80s, you'll know that the Rootmaster bus has a very unique smell. I used to love traveling on these buses as a schoolboy. I used to love their smell, but I never knew at the time what caused that smell. Now, I've since learned as an owner that the smell came from the Rexine material. So it's going to break my heart to take the Rexine out of 1214 and replace it with a leather cloth, because I know when we do that, that bus is going to lose that unique Rootmaster smell forever. But we've got to do it because the Rexine is just beyond repair. So it's a big job. We're going to get the seats and the seat frames out. I can't manage that on my own. So I've brought two very good friends along who are going to help me with the job. This is Gary and Peter who kindly came in for the day to give me a hand. Our first job was to remove all the squabs and the backs from both the lower and the upper decks. Now there's a real mixed bag of seats on RM1214, some are in a terrible state but others are really quite good. So we sorted them into two piles, a pile that needs to go away for recovering and a pile that are actually good enough to go back on the bus when the job is done. The ones that are good enough we stack them on top of the pallet racking to get them out of the way and the ones that need to go away for retrimming we've put them in the corner temporarily for now. The next job was to remove all the seat frames but before we started we gave each frame a number so that it would go back onto the bus in exactly the same position that it came from. Then it was a case of crawling around on our hands and knees, unbolting each seat from the floor and the sidewall. So there you have it, that's virtually all the seats out. We've left two frames in, and I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes' time. But now we've got a chance to have a good look at the rec scene on the side of the wall here, and it really, really is in a sorry state. I'm going to show you one point on the bus now where it's fairly typical the condition of the rec scene on this vehicle. As you can see, just in front of the bulkhead here, it's already peeling off. Just there it comes up, just peeling off like that. So the Rexine was in such a terrible state, and we've worked out now why it got in such a terrible state, and that's because it got wet. And the reason why it got wet was the window rubbers have become porous. Okay, this bus we know was kept outside for a number of years, so in the winter it would have frozen, it would have got dead hot in here in the summer, and that has just completely ruined the window rubber. Every time this bus then went out in the rain, the rainwater would seep in through the window rubber and run down the wall inside the bus, ruining the rec scene. So that means we've got two jobs to do because it's pointless us spending all this time replacing the rec scene for the next time the bus to go out in the rain for water to run in and ruin it again. So not only are we going to replace the rec scene, we're going to change all the window rubbers as well. So one job has now turned into two. So why do we leave two seat frames on the lower deck? 
Well, the two seat frames we've left in have speakers connected to them. As you can see, the speaker is here. It's bracketed to the feet of the seat frame. Now, these speakers are still wired in. It was a very professional job that was done by the previous owner. They've had two speakers fitted on the lower deck, two on the upper deck. There's an amp just behind me here, behind the bench seat that sits there discreetly, and there's a mixer in the conductor's locker. So I've got a decision to make. Do I rip the PA system out or do I keep it on the bus? Now, the preservationist for me says get rid of it. These buses are in service. They never had PA systems on them. So why would you have one on it now? But then, on the other hand, when I'm wearing my business hat, we hire these buses out for weddings and corporate events, and we do get asked from time to time if our clients can play music on the buses. So it might be nice to have a bus in the fleet that has a built-in PA system. So I've got a big decision to make, and I've decided to leave the seat frames in for now because I haven't quite made that decision yet. What do you think I should do? Maybe you should put your comments and your suggestions in the box below. But for now, we're just going to leave these two seat frames in and we'll crack on with work around these seat frames while I make a decision about whether or not to take the PA system out or leave it on the bus. With the frames out of the way, the next job was to remove all the brackets that held the seats in place. Now, whenever we do a job like this, we try to reuse as many of the original bolts as possible, as some like the stainless steel bolts from the top of the seat frame are no longer available. So for safekeeping, they're all stored in individual containers. While Alan continued unbolting, I started pulling the Rexine off the wall. Note how easy it was to remove and how you can also see where the Rexine was repaired by only patching up small areas in the past. You know, ripping that Rexine off the walls yesterday was thoroughly enjoyable. I loved every minute of it. And the fact that it came off so easily just shows that the job probably should have been done many, many years ago. Now, we're going to end the video here and say thanks again for watching. I make no apologies for this being a short video. I thought there was only so much of us ripping seats and seat frames out and taking Rexine off walls that you'd want to see. And the length of the video doesn't actually reflect the amount of work that's actually gone into the project so far. So thank you to everybody involved. The work of course will continue and we will continue to video that and we'll bring you the updates and the progress in future videos. We have ordered the window rubber, the replacement rubber for the windows. That's got a two week lead in time for the manufacture process. So we thought we'd get this video online and show you the work so far. Now, there's still a lot of prep to do on the area where the replacement Rexine is going to be going. That all needs sanding down. The bulkheads need sorting out. So there's still many, many hours of work to do on this project. Now, before we do go, uh, just a quick reminder, I still haven't made a decision yet about what we're going to do with regards to the PA system. Should we keep it on the bus or should we get rid of it? That's a big question. What would you do if you were in my shoes? Please put your comments and your suggestions in the box below and uh, we'll share some of your views in the next video. So thanks again for watching. If you haven't done so already, remember hit subscribe and remember to tick the bell as well so you get notifications every time we upload a new video here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.